Hi, my name is Daniel and this is MailZM. Here are my three top secrets to reselling postcards online. I've used these secrets to sell postcards for higher prices, to get better quality inventory, and to sell postcards more quickly. Uh, and I've been using these, um, I've developed them over the last few years since I started reselling, and they're just things that I've picked up and learned along the way. And I don't hear any other sellers talking about this online. So hopefully if you resell postcards, you can learn a thing or two from me. So the first secret I have is that the postcard publisher is very important. And I do not mean that the publisher of the postcard is what sells the card, but there are several postcard publishers that publish more unique views um, of smaller towns. Often they're the only publisher, publisher that publish a certain view. So I always keep an eye out for these cards, whether I'm buying lots of postcards online or at a postcard show. But this is what I look out for to see if a lot might be a good lot to buy. The first publisher is Zimmerman, or just identified as Zim on the back of the card. Uh, you can tell here by the letters on the front, they use a unique font, usually red letters. And again, more uncommon views of smaller towns is usually what they publish. Check out the back here. You can see the little man, the Zim. On the side it says published by H.G. Zimmerman & Co. Chicago. But I found he publishes very, or he published very uncommon cards, smaller town views. Next one is a similar type publisher, uh, which I don't actually know who it is. So if you know, uh, let me know in the comments. But this publisher on the front, you can tell they used all capital letters, a unique font style, and a little bit italicized. So look out for that on the front of cards. Also, their hand coloring is a little bit unique as well. So they used brighter pastel colors, as you can see here. Um, the sky is very blue, very pretty, but uh, you can identify them on the back by those block postcard letters. And I always look for these cards. Uh, they say and different publishers on there. So the Beehive is just the local, maybe local drugstore or photography shop. So they're, they have a bunch of different publishers listed on the back, but I don't know who the national publisher or printer was that actually um, printed these cards. So look out for that big postcard and block letters on the back of cards. Uh, the next one is a publishing company in New York City. Um, they published some views of New York, a lot of New York actually, but they also published views across the country. And I always, will pick up these cards. If I see them at a show, or if I uh, see them in larger lots, I will try to get the lot. But you can see here, they're a little bit harder to identify because they have a white border and uh, they can get easily confused with the white border arrow, but they come before that. So these are around, I would say 1908-ish to 1915, around in there. Um, but this publisher was not around very long. They got into some legal trouble. When I was looking them up, I couldn't find much about them at all online, which usually means they weren't around for very long and they didn't publish uh, very many cards. They weren't very prolific, which are two things you want to look out for when you're looking for a good publisher, um, more unique cards. But this one here, you can see on the front, the style is white border before white border was popular and the font is not that unique at all. But on the back, you can identify, again, the back's not super unique, but a lot of them will say SNS on the back, which was the name of the publisher. I'm gonna show you a uh, blank back here um, for another card that I think is by the same publisher, but it's not identified on the back. Maybe they stopped using their name after they got into some legal trouble. I'm not sure what happened there, but these are the same style, and I'll show you the front of that card as well. These are the same style on the front and the back, um, just a little bit different. The white border doesn't go all the way around, but based on the similarity of the back, I believe they're the same publisher and the more small town views. Uh, the next one is a little bit later. So this is the Auburn Postcard Company or Auburn Greeting Card Company, but they published cards in the 20s and 30s mainly, and they did a lot of small town views, more unique cards that are really attractive collect to collectors. So they did a lot of street scenes. They have a lot of cool store signs and their images. I chose this one because it represents to me a lot of the cards they publish. So you can see a gas pump right there, a garage. Uh, on the left, you can see a drug sign. Those super cool old cars on the left, but they publish a lot of images very similar to this. 
You can identify their cards by the font and the title of the card is always in the bottom left. And they will have a white border, um, but they use a unique style font, so I can usually identify it by the front, but if you can't, uh, it'll usually say Auburn Postcard or Auburn Greeting Card Company on the back of the card. Uh, the next publisher is probably the biggest one, um, or one of the biggest publishers in the United States the Albert type company, but their cards I've found, especially their older cards, can be pretty highly sought after by collectors. So this example I'm going to show you is a railroad depot in a small town in New York. You can see it's a really attractive card, hand colored. Um, I can identify them by the font, so if you notice the letters on the front of the card are stylized. Sometimes that will be at the top right, sometimes it'll have some blank space at the bottom of the card and the title will be down there. But if you can't identify it by the front, it'll say Albertype Co. in the stamp box. Or for later cards, they would use that as the divider. Um, but the postcard font on the back is also pretty unique. But again, I found that Albertype Company cards are higher quality than other images just because of the process used to produce them. So they're not RPPCs, but the Albertype process is closer to the real photo process than a normal postcard. So these images are usually more detailed and higher quality than others, which is why I believe they're highly sought after. Those are all the publishers that I look out for. So those six, if I see um, those at shows or in larger lots, I'll try to pick them up where I can. Now the publisher doesn't sell the card. So if you put uh, Zimmerman in the title or SNS in the title, I doubt that's gonna help you sell the card. What people look for is the smaller town views and the more attractive scenes. So those six publishers uh, all stick to those, or sorry, those five publishers uh, publish more uncommon views and more attractive uh, street scenes and uh, they're definitely worth keeping an eye out for. Now two publishers that do help sell the card are Fred Harvey, which you can identify on the back. I'll show you here. It'll usually always say Fred Harvey on the back or I've seen it in the front, on the front in some cases. Uh, but that can help sell a card for more than a similar view from a different publisher. Another one people collect is the Island Curio Company, which published early Hawaiian cards. And those two, the publisher can actually add some dollars to your sale. The second secret is that it's easy to get high quality inventory without ever leaving your home. And I've gotten the vast, vast majority of my postcards online. I've bought from local collectors. I've bought uh, some from postcard shows. Um, a few from a flea market I've been to and an antique store, but 95% or more of the postcards I sell, I buy online. And I know some sellers uh, struggle finding quality inventory, so I'm gonna tell you where I buy postcards. Um, you already know what I look for in lots. So the sites I use are High Bid, Live Auctioneers, and Invaluable are the three sites that I've been able to find really high quality cards on. And they usually sell uh, these are not individuals, these are auction houses selling cards, so it can be a little bit more difficult to buy. Not all of them ship. Um, you have to work with them sometimes to pay. Some of them only take checks. There's some unique quirks like that, but I found very high quality inventory because they usually sell uh, old dealer stock or collections, and they're usually not picked through at all. Uh, now, I do buy from eBay too, and I'm going to show you what I look for when buying on eBay. So on eBay, you have to be very, very careful um, what you buy and who you buy from. So I don't usually buy from postcard resellers on eBay, and I've had luck with some before. Um, some smaller sellers or sellers who specialize in a different thing than I did. Uh, I've bought lots from and had success with, but in general, I'll go to a seller's listings, and if they have uh, single postcards for sale, I will probably not be buying lots from them uh, because they would probably be picked through. But here's an example of an eBay listing that I bought recently, uh, and it has a lot of things that I look for, but it doesn't really look like a great listing. You can see it here. I paid $78.78 for this. I believe my high bid was about $100, so I ended up paying a little over a dollar a card, but I would have paid close to $1.25, $1.30 a card if my bid had gotten, uh, or if it had gotten bid up higher. But what did I see in this that I thought was so good? So it only had one image, 
Um, but the seller, I could tell they didn't sell postcards. They didn't use keywords in the title that makes me know that they know a lot about what they're selling. Like they didn't put RPPC in the title, even though I can see some RPPCs. So this lot, they didn't really know a lot, of, a lot about, which is something I look for and not to take advantage of other sellers, but just because I know that if they don't know a ton about what they're selling, then that means they haven't picked through the lot. So I will pay up for higher quality lots that haven't been picked through. And this one, the seller made over a dollar per card, uh, which I would say is a pretty good sale for a lot of postcards, especially since they only had one image. Um, you can see it blown up here. So this is what I saw that drew me to this lot. I see a real photo on top, and there were several real photos in the lot, which were very good. I made my money back by selling just a couple of those real photos, or I believe I might have priced even one. Um, close to the price I paid for the entire lot. But the other postcards you can see are just really unique images. Um, that horse drawn one in front is an Albert type card and I believe it was a fire department. I don't remember right offhand, but all the other cards you can see a shell border card there in the corner, uh, smaller towns. You can only see about maybe 12 to 15 of the cards and there's 74, but I was confident that all of the cards would look like the ones on the top, and I was correct. It was a little bit of a gamble, but it paid off, and I did um, pay up for it a little bit, paid over a dollar per card, but that's what I look for when I'm buying postcards on eBay. I look for sellers that maybe don't sell a lot of other postcards, um, because then I know that they haven't picked out the good ones in the lot, and I'm getting somebody's personal collection, uh, that is not picked through. So a third secret, um, I don't see a lot of sale sellers using price anchoring to their advantage, but I've been using it and having a lot of success with it. So what is price anchoring? That means the price that you start a postcard at will stay in a customer's mind and they will use that to inform their, de their decision making. So, um, for example, a seller, a really unique real photo postcard that you price at $100. Um, is more likely to sell if that regular price is $100 and it's sold for $80 on a 20% offer rather than just pricing it at $80 to start with and not sending out offers. So customers like to think they're getting a good deal and the price that you set it at at first is the price in their mind that it costs. So when you give them a discount on that, it feels like they're getting a really good deal. And this doesn't work with cards that are more common and uh, have other ones out there. I only use price anchoring with my unique cards, more one-of-a-kind views, real photos, but I will price cards on the higher side and send out offers or turn on the option to make an offer rather, rather than price a postcard at what I think um, a buyer would be willing to pay. And I believe it's paid off for me. I've sold postcards. Uh, you can check out my what sold video link below. Um, but that has a few Chrome cards that sold for $30, $35, $40. $40. And I would normally price Chrome cards under $20. But those were more unique cards that I didn't see out there at all. And I used having the only card on the market to my advantage. And I priced it higher than I normally would have. Um, I believe a few of them sold on offers. Uh, but yeah, when you have more unique cards, you can kind of set the price and determine the market. Uh, but again, that doesn't always change what a buyer will be willing to pay. So if you do set the price of a card high, you have to be ready to accept offers or to send out offers to buyers um, if you want to move your inventory. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I've used these three tips to help me build my postcard reselling business online over the last two years. Um, they've really helped me buy postcards, move them quicker. Um, and get better quality inventory and more for um, my postcards. So I hope they help you out too. Let me know what you think in the comments and thank you so much for watching.